I'm Blair Gilbert here for Gilbert's Hardware in St. Clair Shores, Michigan and MrHardware.com. Here to show you how we can antique and put grain onto enameled surfaces, heat registers, or take an existing stained board and make it a little darker, or a lot darker for that matter. The surface we started with was just a little bit slippery so that the ink didn't just soak right into the surface. You cannot do this on flat latex paint. You end up just painting it. It will not take and accept any graining. That's an enameled wooden door. Before we use the wiping stain, it's a little deglosser. We took the deglosser in a rag. We took, we wiped it around this panel of this door because it had so many cracks and crevices, we just wouldn't be able to sand it properly. And we're going to show the pattern of how you're going to put grain on a piece of wood and make it look like it's wood. So the neat thing with most of the wiping stains is you have a long time to work with. What you do is you get it on in as consistent a pattern as you can first. Not too thick. We're not painting. We are going to be antiquing. So we're going to take this wiping stain. So in the old days the kit and Old Masters was the company that was famous for it back then. You would use a uh, oil base base coat. You would take use an oil base stain back then they called it ink and they would do what I'm doing here. They put the base coat of paint on usually a light color because as you can see how this is coming out dark and then you put the uh, ink on just like I am here when this is up and this is a kitchen or something it's going to be a whole passel of cabinet doors and stuff people won't be looking at every inch of this job so you get the stain in here, the wiping stain is in here and then you pull it you just pull it, you can use carpeting there was a day I used to use shag carpeting to do this shag carpeting and you pull it with that and the different materials that you pulled the anchor, the stain with the different pattern you got out of it we're just using El Cheapo brush today, a little whitey chip brush nothing, nothing nice and as you can see I've got a lot of time to play with this the stuff just doesn't dry that fast if I think I get a spot too light you dab a little more stain on and then you pull it and you make it a little dark. If you get too much bleed through you can do two coats. You can do one light coat first come back later an hour or two now and put a second coat on. The second, and then the second coat will fill in the light spots that you can see that are bleeding through a little bit here and there. So the second coat sometimes two coats make a nice very rich job. Got a little too dark here a little too dark over here. We blot off the excess and then we re pull the grain. Long, even strokes. Now, in this particular door, the head panel, the head style, ends right there. So, we want to make it look like a board. Like a carpenter ran a board through, we run our grain too long first across the head panel, overlapping into our sides, and now we come over to the side and we make it look like a board right there. Okay, here where it's pulled a little light, I might come back at a later date and put a second coat there. Kind of fast, rip and tear, gives you a clue what you can achieve. You do it twice, the second time it makes it look even richer, like there's more grain. I have some heat registers that I did. I had my friends come by and they swore to me that they were wood. I go, no, they're not wood. They're just wood grain metal. So you had to get very close, especially after it's on the wall, surrounded by other wood and other stuff too. The stain's oil base. You need to have a little bit of paint thinner around to clean up. Now this is going to take all night to dry. I can add another light coat in about an hour though. After this is all done, you put a satin varnish or polyurethane on it which gives it durability, washability, and evens up the shine. So you take and put that on a wall with some paneling, possibly with a second coat on it. This son of a gun, people wouldn't even know that, it's, that it was an antique piece of metal. I think what we may do is give a second coat and to see what it looks like after we've touched it up. A piece of wood, it's medium oak. The wife doesn't like it. 
She wants the kitchen to be a little darker. We can do the same thing. Put a light coat on top of this. We have a twofer here because we get the advantage of the wood grain underneath adding to the grain that we're creating by the brush. So when people look at this board later, they won't know that this was a lighter piece that we've cheated to a darker color. Especially when they look close and they see the wood grain, some of the oak wood grain peeking through. So you could do a piece of satin uh, varnish over the top of this to protect it. We let our project sit for one day, but there's an awful lot of the white. So the ivory is bled through. And our goal here is to take and, and cover the ivory and we're going to get more grainy because the first brushing put a certain grain on the door. Now when we do step two, if you need it, we're getting a little more grain on top of the first grain. So the grain gets a little more complex. This color that we're using here is called Special Walnut. Made by Old Masters, this product seems to have a lot of finish. When you're using this product, one, you have to be careful of the, we would just blot a little off, pull our grain again, and the lighter I hold my brush, the more I let the tip run, the finer the grain is going to become. There's all kinds of tools you can use to pull the grain. There's old paint brushes that got a little bit stiff on you. There's shag carpeting. There's actually a tool, a graining tool you can buy, that when you pull the graining tool across, it actually pulls grain that looks just like wood. Some of my best work is when I've gone the fast. The more I pull it and play with it, the more I mess it up. A lot of times it's better to go fast and furious and don't lose your mind on the mistake. The other thing you have going for you here is we're looking at one door. When you do this project, you're usually doing a whole kitchen or a whole cabinet or a whole bookcase. So when people come and look at it, they're looking at the whole project. So we tend as amateurs to spend too much time looking at every square inch. When really, when someone comes into your house and looks and sees something cool, they're looking at the whole project. To you, the project was a bunch of small pieces. Could be a little bit better, take a little bit more time. I get a whole kitchen done like this, you're going to be hard pressed to tell it from a wood one. The other cute thing is when you take a kitchen and you darken it up, a lot of times you're dealing already with a piece of wood. So it's pretty easy to take the piece of wood and make it look darker because you already have a base coat of brown. Kind of like what I'm dealing with here. I have a base coat of stain on this project. So that's making the second come up go on just a little easier for me. One thing I'm doing here is I'm just letting the tips of the brush very lightly on the surface. I'm not pushing on the brush at all. I'm just letting it float over my material, drag the material, pull the stain. So the second coat, as you can see, is filled in. Now when we're choosing these colors, <clears throat> we're doing this project here with the special walnut. That color there. Two coats of the special walnut came out quite a bit darker than it looks like on a piece of bare wood. Actually a piece of bare oak. By putting on multiple coats we're going to get more color. We can't go lighter with anything but we can always take and go a little bit darker. So if you want to take a kitchen and darken it or take an antique, a steel door, or a piece of steel, anything, and it happens to be in a wood situation, you'd like to blend it in, you can see how easy it is here to do that.